All right, guys. So if ever there was a time to not fall asleep, that would be now. Uh, because this weekend and the upcoming full moon is extremely high watch. So I'm going to go into some of the reasons why and uh, what I'm seeing. So first, let's take a look at scripture. Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this verse, Psalm 81.3, which is talking about the full moon. Uh, the King James Version renders that as the time appointed, but that's um, Strong's 3677 Kessa, which means full moon. So it says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon or month uh, at the full moon on our solemn feast day. Okay, so blowing the trumpet at the full moon. So we pay attention at every full moon because of that verse and also because of Proverbs 720. But notice it says, uh, it's it's Psalm 81.3. Okay, so that's 8.1.3. And if you open a moon sliver calendar, uh, you'll see that the full moon actually falls on Heshvan 13 or 8.13, uh, which matches the chapter verse signature of Psalm 81.3. So that by itself should already pique our interest uh, because it could be that that verse is actually referring to the full moon of this month, just based on that, uh, you know, the chapter verse signature matching the date signature. And that's all the more likely to be the case if you believe in a 2024 rapture, as I do, because there are only two full moons left, right? So if the rapture is going to happen on a full moon, it's either going to be this one or the one in December. And I think it's uh, far more likely to be this one, given all a whole bunch of other information that I'm tracking. Uh, and if it's this one, then uh, I think it's beyond coincidence that that chapter verse signature matches the moon sliver date of the full moon. So the upcoming full moon is extremely high watch. Depending on your time zone, it's going to fall on the 15th or the 16th of November. Uh, but I'm actually looking a lot lately at uh, November 17th. There seems to be a lot of evidence piling up that something is going to happen on that date. So that's just a little bit after the full moon. That's on uh, Sunday. Uh, so first of all, if you look at that date, it's the 322nd day of the year. And it's exactly 223 days after the second Great American Eclipse, uh, which is an interesting convergence there. 223 or 322 usually represent death and destruction. Um, it's a number that's thrown around a lot by the enemy in predictive programming. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of it. Uh, for instance, in this uh, Invictus Games promo with the uh, royal family, where Prince Harry is showing his mother uh, this picture here of these runners, and uh, you got the 239, which is usually it's like the nuclear code, uh, you know, because plutonium. 239 is like the primary fissile isotope for nuclear weapons and then it's got the 223 right so and if you can't really see that that well I have it zoomed in right here 239 and 223 so yeah that date of November 17th is 223 days after April 8th second great American eclipse and it's the 322nd day of the year and another interesting thing about that date is that the 322nd day of the year happens to be 88% of the year. So it's like uh, 88 miles per hour. And that's uh, doubly reinforcing of the fact that we're already going 88 miles per hour as of November 1st, you know, because that was the 88th new moon since the Revelation 12 sign. And what's probably the most significant thing about November 17th is that at sunset on November 17th in Jerusalem, the 17th day of the second month on the Jewish calendar begins, which of course is the flood date from uh, Genesis 7:11. So right here in the second month, the 17th day of the month. And another thing I found noteworthy is the fact that on the Jewish calendar, the 17th day of the second month is starting on what on the Gentile calendar is a date signature that looks pretty similar. So first of all, it is also the 17th day of the month. So here's the Jewish date, right? 217. Uh, both are going to be the 17th day of the month. And in the case of the Gentile calendar, it's, you know, 11th, right? 11th month, November. But, you know, it's just one plus one. So that's like almost like 217 in a way. Uh, I think that's a pretty remarkable similarity there. Now, another thing that's pointing at November 17th is Amos chapter 8. Now, the reason we're looking at Amos 8 so much lately is because of this um, sign, for lack of a better term, of the death of Wally Amos. Right? He's the 
the founder of famous Amos Cookies, and he died at 88. Uh, I guess it was like back in August. So we took that as sort of a hint from God to be looking at Amos chapter 8. And so we've been looking at that chapter a lot lately. And one thing about that chapter, if I can just pull it up here real fast, Amos 8, is it ends on uh, 8.14. And if you look at a moon sliver calendar, 8.14 or Heshvan 14 is November 17th. So that chapter also seems to be pointing at November 17th. And a new moon sliver calendar is definitely the correct calendar type to use for uh, you know translating this chapter verse signature uh, to a date because in Amos 8.5 it mentions the new moon. And not only that, it mentions um, the balances here at the end, right? So in other words, the scales, right? Constellation of Libra. And the moon that we're in right now, or the moonth that we're in right now, began with a new moon in Libra. So, you know, Amos 8.5 is basically pointing to that new moon. So we're looking at a new moon sliver calendar based on that new moon. And then we're looking at this date because this chapter ends on 8.14. So that's Heshvan 14 corresponding to November 17th. And by the way, another reason we know that the new moon mentioned in Amos 8.5 refers to this month's new moon, you know, back on November 1st, is that that new moon was the 88th new moon since the Revelation 12 sign. And remember, the hint that caused us to look at Amos 8 in the first place was Wally Amos dying at age 88. So that hint was not only pointing us to Amos chapter 8, but it was also telling us which new moon it refers to. All right, so the next thing is that we received a sign almost two weeks ago in the form of an earthquake that shook the Greek city of uh, Thessaloniki, which is, of course, uh, the location of the Thessalonian church from which we get our books, First and Second Thessalonians. And this was a magnitude 5.3 earthquake, and it happened at the local time of 5.03 p.m. It just shows UTC time right here, but the local time was 5.03 p.m. And by the way, they downgraded this to like a 5.2 magnitude earthquake, like a few hours afterwards. But when it first came in, it was uh, magnitude 5.3. So basically, Thessaloniki was shaken by a 5.3 magnitude earthquake at 5.03 p.m. So I think that's clearly telegraphing uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.3, which is the verse about uh, sudden destruction. 1 Thessalonians 5.3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Okay, so Thessaloniki 5.3 magnitude earthquake at 5.03 uh, PM. And another confirmation of that is that the epicenter of this earthquake is exactly 883 miles from the birthplace of our Lord Jesus Christ at the uh, Church of the, Nati of the Nativity in Bethlehem. And 883 is the 153rd prime. Okay. So yeah, this is a clear sign, uh, a warning from God that sudden destruction referred to in 1 Thessalonians uh, five three is soon. Okay, so that was on Sunday. Uh, let's see here. That was on Sunday the third. Okay, and if that was a two week warning, uh, that would take us to November seventeenth for um, the sudden destruction to fall. So I don't know if it was, but you know that's kind of interesting that that lines up with that uh, exactly two weeks later. And interestingly, on the um, topic of peace and safety or peace and security, uh, I saw this article, uh, Lavrov, I guess he's the foreign minister, the Russian foreign minister. He arrives in the United Arab Emirates to take part in this um, Sir Bani Yas International Forum on Peace and Security. Uh, the forum kicks off on November 15th. Okay, so that's uh, Friday. It is expected to take place behind closed doors. And then it says participation of leading politicians from a wide array of countries, including the global South and East. So, yeah, isn't it interesting that um, this upcoming weekend, you know, they're going to be saying peace and security during the full moon, uh, you know, right after we get this warning about um, when they're saying peace and security. All right, so in terms of predictive programming stuff, I don't really have that much for this date. I haven't really looked into it that much. I'll probably find more uh, maybe tomorrow. But 
I know Robert Pent has a video out about that date, so if you're interested in that, head over to his channel and check out his latest video. I did find a couple little things. For instance, in the film Leave the World Behind, they show this computer screen in the bunker towards the end of the film when the country is under attack. And on the screen, it has uh, looks what looks like a date. It says 917. And we all assume that that refers to September 17th, especially since they also depicted a partial lunar eclipse in that film. And on September 17th, there was a partial lunar eclipse. But of course, since uh, the month of November is derived from uh, the Latin word novum, which means nine, this 917 could just be an encoded way to refer to uh, November 17th. And what's interesting about that, in light of that partial lunar eclipse that I just mentioned, which is uh, depicted in the film, is that when they show that scene, it actually sounds like they're playing trumpets. So it's kind of subtle, so I'll have to play it for you. Uh, but first of all, I want to point out that Despite the fact that towards the end of this scene, it looks like a solar eclipse, it's it's actually a lunar eclipse because um, if the if the Earth is between the sun and the moon, that's always a lunar eclipse. Okay, so it only looks like a solar eclipse because it's taken from the perspective of the moon, uh, but you know from the Earth from Earth's perspective, this is a lunar eclipse. So I'll go to the beginning here and I'll play this. Hopefully, it's loud enough so you can hear it. So yeah, that sounded a lot like trumpets to me. And the only recent lunar eclipse was that one on September 17th, or 917. So it looks to me like they're using, uh, you know, the number 917 like they showed on the computer screen and like events that happened on 917, like that uh, lunar eclipse, as an encoded reference to November 17th. So it's, it's kind of like a little misdirection there. And what's interesting is right after they show that scene where you hear the trumpet sound, um, everybody wakes up and uh, Rose, the little girl, is missing and nobody can find her. And in the film, that little girl represents believers. So if she turns up missing and nobody can find her, then that's you know their way of symbolizing the rapture. And if my assumption is correct that showing the events that occurred on 917 was just an uh, encoded way to represent 1117, then what they're showing you is that the church would leave the world behind on or around November 17th. Now, the other thing I found was on the cover of The Economist magazine, and they're known for putting a lot of occult stuff on their magazine covers. This one's obviously from 2015. Now, I won't get too much into the content of this cover, except to point out these two arrows down here having what look like dates on them. Uh, March 11th and May 11th using that international date format of the dot but they are known to twist things around so this could very well represent November 3rd and November 5th so if you have two arrows with those two dates on them uh, what date is conspicuously missing well the one right in between November 4th and what's interesting about that in the context of this video is that November 17th on the Julian calendar is November 4th so that could be the way they show us the date of November 17th, as perhaps the date that they decide to start nuclear World War III, uh, especially considering that this magazine cover also features a mushroom cloud. All right, guys, so that is all I've got for this video. Please stay awake and keep your lamps burning, as it looks like our Lord may be coming for us very, very soon. So thank you for watching. God bless and Maranatha. The gospel is the good news of how Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and then he rose again three days later. He did this to give us eternal life in heaven and to save us from hell. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Jesus said in John 6.47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So to be saved from hell and to have the gift of eternal life, you must trust Christ alone.